Now before I talk about this lens from Mikey, I just want to apologise about any background noise you may hear in this video. It's winter here in New Zealand and just like the UK, it rains a lot. It's been raining the last few days actually and every single time I try and do this video, it rains. So I'm just going to do the video. So please try and ignore any background sounds you hear. I will try and edit out as much as I can. Now this is a new lens from Mikey. It's a 10mm T2.2 lens for APS-C, crop sensors or Super 35 sensors. So this lens comes in Canon RF mount. So that means it will work with any of my Canon mirrorless cameras. It will also work with the C70, the Red Komodo and the Red V Raptor. As you can see, it's a very compact Cinema Prime and has a very affordable price of 499 US dollars. You can see how compact this lens is when I put it next to a full frame cinema lens from Mikey. This is a 50 mil T2.1. Now, if you want to learn more about this 50 mil T2.1 lens from Mikey, you can check out my review. It will pop up here somewhere and it'll be down in the description. And I've also done a review on a 25 mil micro four thirds version of this lens on the GH5. Again, that will pop up here somewhere and it'll be down in the description. Now at the time of making this video, Mikey offer a range of, hang on a minute, I'm just gonna check this so I get this right. They do a 10 mil, a 35 mil, a 50 mil, a 65 mil and an 85 mil and they're all T2.2. They do have come in a 16 mil and a 25 mil. So they'll have a full range of Cinema Primes. Now they also offer this in other mounts. They do it in Fuji X, Sony E, and also Micro Four Thirds as well. This is a completely manual lens. You have your iris ring, which is an aperture ring on a photography lens. You have your fastest T-stop, which is T2.2, and it goes all the way up to T22. And it's de-clicked, and it is very, very smooth. There's no tight spots in that at all, and it has hard stops at either end. The focus is 270 degrees and you have hard stops at either end. Now the closest focusing distance on this lens is 30 centimeters. As you can see from this photo, you can get really close to the subject. On the front of the lens, you have a 77 mil front filter thread and you have a pinch style lens cap, which has your focal length and it has your T-stops. I don't mind this style of lens cap because the nice thing is you've got it inside your bag and you'll pick it up like that and you can actually see what lens you're picking up. The full frame version has this slide over which the problem with that is when I pick it up, it comes off. So I actually do prefer these pinch style lens caps. Now this is my Red Komodo here. So let me put the lens on the Red Komodo. Let me put this on here quickly. Now there is one issue I have with this lens, which I'll talk about later. Not a major thing, but it is one thing that does bug me about this lens. Okay. So there it is on the Red Komodo. What I do like about this lens is that I can actually adjust the focus here because the lens is so small. I actually like this setup. I do like these handles on the Red Komodo. Obviously I have a screen on here as well. I have my small HD, whatever screen it is. I haven't put that on there at the moment because you won't be able to see the lens so well, but it fits the Komodo really, really well. Now all of the footage you're about to see was shot with the Red Komodo and the C70. Most of it was handheld. I think a couple of times I rested on a wall to give me a bit more stable footage. And the footage from the C70 was all shot with the built-in digital IS all handheld. Now the built-in digital IS on this camera works incredibly well with this lens. So if you do have an R5C and you want to shoot in 6K crop mode, you can actually use the digital IS and this lens and get very stable footage. This is a very nice modern and clean lens. What I mean by that is it's very sharp, even at T2.2. It has nice contrast and it has very little lens flaring and artifacts, even at 2.2. Now, 
I shot this video on the Canon C70 to test lens flare. Now the reason I use the Canon C70 is because of the internal NDs, as I didn't want to put any NDs or any type of glass on the front of the lens. As you can see, it controls lens flare really well, even pointing directly at the sun. Now somebody asked me the other day about the glass in this lens and how well that glass matches the glass in their full frame lenses. So I did a quick test with a color checker. As you can see, they match really well. Now I'll actually put these two clips in a Dropbox folder and there'll be a link to that Dropbox folder down below in the description so you can check them out for yourself. The dot on the back of the lens here, it's here, not on this part here. It's here to line up the lens on the camera, which I'm gonna try and do now. There. It makes it really hard to line the lens up when you've got a monitor on there because obviously I can't see the dot on the actual lens mount. So what I would like them to do is put a dot here on the outer ring. So when I'm lining up, I can actually see where I'm going because it can be quite difficult. I even had the same problems on my C70 to be truthful. That's just a minor little thing for me. I'll probably just put a dot on there of a magic marker to be truthful and that make my life a lot easier. This lens performs way above its price point. It has a 270 degree focus, which is very, very smooth and there's no tight spots all the way through and has a very smooth iris ring, which goes from T2.2 up to T22 and it's built like a tank. It's incredibly well made. I can't believe that Mikey have produced a lens this good for only 499 US dollars. So there it is on the Canon C70. As you can see, it fits really well on the Canon C70. It's a very nice compact cinema prime and the image quality is absolutely outstanding. Now, if you want me to review the rest of the lenses in this range for the Canon RF mount, let me know down in the description. So that's it for this video. I really hope you guys have enjoyed it. And as always, thank you so much for watching.